This video is the second exercise video in the Terrain Analysis Workshop that which is part of the Conservation Applications of LIDAR. This video assumes you have the PDF from the, the MinGeo site that explains the Terrain Analysis Workshop exercises. We're, we're going to start with the exercise 2 having completed exercise 1. Now exercise 2 we're talking about visualization <clears throat> and comparative techniques, generally interpretation of the data we calculated in exercise 1. Now the first thing you want to remember is that we're going to be comparing our information that we've calculated from the LIDAR images and the, the derived information from the LIDAR the CTI and the stream power index, the SPI, that we're going to be comparing that to other sources of information. And you want to remember from, from exercise one, we talked about going to the MinGeo site and see how's and looking at the WMS server, uh, the GeoImage server HTML, and looking at the technical specs for setting up the uh, a WMS a do, a link to the uh, ortho photos uh, and information on the MinGeo site. And what we're, what we're going to be doing is taking the data that we had calculated from the exercise one, and we're going to be comparing that to information from the Min, images from MinGeo. So I'm going to click on an ArcGIS. I'm going to click on uh, a GIS servers. And then I've already added the WMS server. But if you were uh, going to add this, you'd pick the MinGeo site, uh, the link from the MinGeo site. You'd copy it and paste it and add. And so I'm going to uh, then select the aerial imagery and add that to our <coughs> uh, uh, to our work from exercise one. And then I'm going to uh, uh, establish that the as my uh, my link so that what I'm going to be um, screen, uh, uh, talking about here is comparing the image uh, on the ground with our calculated value and so once I've established that aerial image within my layer my group of layers um, and have that turned on I would make sure it's in my effects layer as the action and then I'm able to use the effects toolbar to actually swipe so that I could take the information I calculated in exercise one uh, and this is being the DEM that we're looking at right now uh, uh, and see exactly what that looks like on the ground and this is a real rich source of information you can see for example that there's some tiling uh, that exists in here and, uh, and as I swipe through it, you can get an idea. There's a road, and, uh, and you get some idea of where, the, uh, where that surface information is. And you can get uh, a good feeling for what's on the landscape. Now, what we're going to do is to talk about how we display the data that we had uh, calculated in exercise one. So I'm going to turn the image off for the moment and start with the digital elevation model, the DEM. And you'll notice on the DEM that I'm using a color ramp that's very typical for digital elevation models. And I'm going to do properties of that layer and symbology. And you'll see that the color ramp that I'm using to display this uh, is, is something that has many different shades of color. And this is what's referred to in, in ESRI terms as the DEM color ramp. And, uh, and it gives you quite a bit of information showing you blue where it's at uh, the very low elevations and then the white in the higher. And that gives you a very good idea of the information. Now, another piece of information that we want to talk about is there are some errors um, and little nuances or anomalies in the LiDAR derived data. It's very, very good, very, very accurate, one meter resolution. Uh, but that there occasionally are situations where, in this case, like in this situation, there's a couple of trees that got interpreted inadvertently as bare ground. 
Uh, and I'm not exactly sure it could have been such a dense canopy that the, the LiDAR algorithm uh, had difficulty with those. And what that had created was uh, some anomalies within. Now, we had talked about before how you could remove that by using a neighborhood function, a filter, to actually smooth that out. Uh, in, in this particular case, we're going to just leave that. But uh, you might have noticed in exercise one when we were calculating the stream power index or the CTI or the slope that we were getting some crazy values. We were getting 800% slope. We were getting some negative values in the uh, uh, extreme negative values in the CTI or in the SPI. And that had to do with a couple of anomalies. So, so I want to make sure you understand that. The next piece is that uh, when we're describing slope, and I'll bring up the slope here, is that you want to uh, put the slope together in some sort of color ramp that makes some sense. And in this case, I'm showing the dark as the steeper slope, uh, and I'm classifying that. I'll do properties to show you how I'm recommending do that. I'm using that as classified with five color light to dark, just to, to help you understand where the steeper slopes are. Uh, so that's a tip on the, the slope map. The flow accumulation is, is, a, is another story. Uh, what the flow accumulation is, we're talking about cells in the, uh, every cell uh, in the landscape and how many cells spill into that cell. So that at this particular location here, you can see, uh, and I'll zoom out a little bit, a little bit more. At this particular location, you know, uh, that we have a, uh, these cells have many cells spilling in, into them, and these have very few, and these have a, a moderate number. So you get an idea of where the streams are forming. Now the best way to visualize this is something with a color ramp that shows you clearly where the cells are that have the potential to form a stream. And the, the other, the other uh, way that is often helpful for this is to consider this as a type of, um, as, as a type uh, of watershed. And, I, and an often a good way to do that is to draw the watershed uh, or sketch the watershed boundary. And I'm not going to draw that now, but you could uh, get an idea that this particular area here around this potential stream is would be if we were to draw freehand uh, or we were to calculate the watershed boundary and display that, that might be the most useful to show the area because the flow accumulation or catchment area is really that area upstream that contributes to that cell. So, so if we were to consider this as an outlet, that this would be the area that contributes to that, to that point. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the CTI. And the important thing about the CTI is that the CTI is the, uh, the, that area that might be collecting water on the landscape. Remember we were talking about taking the flow accumulation and dividing it by the slope? so that we creating the CTI. So these are the areas where a wetness indicate, it would be indicated, where water might be collecting. And here, the best way to do that would be to take those high values uh, in your symbology and represent those the very high values as a, a dark blue and a fairly uh, those uh, lower values below some sort of threshold which you'd examine appropriate for that landscape as to blank or zero. So you can get an idea of where the wetness. Now the stream power index, we also want to focus on the high values. And this is the area in the landscape and where uh, we might be getting some erosion. So we're using brown to talk about those areas. And here I've taken those values that are fairly high. The stream power index and I had looked at the spread of values and, and determined that above 3 or 3.5 would probably show quite a bit of of erosion or sediment uh, transport uh, and that I'm showing that as brown. So you get an idea of where the, the wetness uh, is indicated and where the erosive power of the streams are indicated, where we're multiplying the, the flow accumulation times the slope. So these are just sort of tips about how you would display the, 
the information and start to get an idea of how that works and and how that's represented on the landscape and then how you could you could swipe and move the the uh, and I have to turn it on um, how you would be able to move the uh, the picture across the landscape and you get an idea of where the wetness could be uh, or where the the erosive power and you you uh, and then compare that to the photo now that we've talked about how we can display all the various different layers we've calculated and consider comparing them to the ortho photo we want to uh, do a percentile analysis now to do that we have to use Excel so we're going to take the information and export that from uh, ArcGIS uh, and so we'll raster to ASCII and we're going to name it stream power index underscore percentile and we'll say OK. And while that's calculating, we want to talk about how you can see what's happening when things are when these LIDAR layers are being processed. If we go to geoprocessing results, we would be able to, and then we do the little drop down, we can see that the raster to ASCII is processing. It's got the time there and it's showing what's happening. And these were all the completed earlier steps we did before. So now it's finished and we can go to Excel and do our analysis. We want to navigate to the location where we have the percentile, this SPI percentile.txt and start the import process. We're going to say that's delimited and we're going to want to start, we could delete the first six rows or we could start importing at the, the seventh row and it's probably easiest if we start importing at the seventh row where there's data and we'll say next and we'll say that it's not tab but it's space delimited and we're going to say next and we'll say finished. Now we've got an array of all our SPI values and what we're going to do is we're going to move to the very end of that array this is an ASCII representation of the of the raster we're going to select the very last cell hold control shift down and we're going to touch the home button that highlights the entire array then we're going to right click and define name and we're going to give that name array just call it array so we are able to use it in our later calculations and then we're going to find an empty cell doesn't really matter where and we're going to put in the following calculation for percentile and we're going to use this value so we're saying do the, the 75th percentile of this array We'll say enter to that so that that begins processing. When that's done, we'll take that value and we'll copy it several times uh, off to the side so we could fill in the 80th. This was the 75th. We'll do the 80th, 85, so on. So we'll fill that into the next few columns and we'll paste and then we're going to edit these values so instead of 75 we're going to do this at 80 and so on across the across till we um, finish and now you'll notice so I've got 75th 80 85 90 95 and I also did a hundred percent just as a check value now these values we're going to use uh, in our uh, ArcGIS display of the SPI. Now I changed my, I added some labels on the top of my spreadsheet so you know which percentile was which. I resized the windows and I'm going to, for the SPI layer in symbology classified, I'm going to classify that into how many columns? I got one, two, three, four, five. So I'll put that in five categories and I'm going to uh, determine what the values are. Now to determine the values I have to classify, um, use the classify button and I'm going to classify and you'll notice that my top value is somewhere near or pretty close to the my check value and it might very well have to do with the sampling value is that I might not have sampled all the records so that is something you might want to be paying attention to but on my break values here I'm going to be putting in the break values for the percentiles. So I fill those values in 
that I have for 75, 80, 85, so on. So the breaking is at this point for this, everything below from the lowest number to that value is 75% and so on as we move up. So I've calculated in Excel to figure out what the break values were where I couldn't do that in, in uh, ArcGIS. I hit OK, OK a second time, and you can see how I'm, I'm now stratifying it into the 95%, the, uh, 90, so on and so forth. And we might very well want to change our color ramp, so we're going to right click and we're going to flip the colors so we could flip that around and since this is the uh, SPI we're probably going to want to use a color ramp that is brown and we might very well take the lowest values and change those to no color so that we're able to see the areas where the stream power <coughs> index is broken into 75 percent uh, 80 uh, percent 95 percent now you want to compare these uh, known sites, you know, to our known sites of observed gullies with our classified values, and see if there's any correlation between the erosive erosion features and the high SPI values. Now, this is has how you would prioritize this information and display it for the conservation, you know, uh, targeting sites for for uh, uh, conservation measures. This now completes this exercise.